Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Parenting with Purpose. I'm Christian, and today I wanna to talk to you about how to maintain your peace in this season. You know, I used to think that peace was just about being silent. I used to think that peace had to do with everything being under control, it had to be perfect, and nothing could be out of order. That was just me. But it was a season that really taught me how or what peace really is, what it looks like. Peace is really something that is formed on the inside. I never forget, and what's interesting, I'll say this, <laughs> what's interesting is I have more peace in my life in this season than I ever have. And I have way less in this season. All of the seasons before, I had way more and thought I had peace. Until now, I'm in this season where I have less, but I have more peace. When God first called me from my job, the first few months, I was doing well. It was some, some, I don't know, maybe around the fifth or sixth month and things just started to get a little shaky. I was, you know, if truth be told, I thought God was calling me to leave the job so he could set me up for another job. I'm just being honest with y'all, okay? <laughs> I thought he was about to set me up with another job, but that wasn't the case. So what took place was I was used to having a job I was used to having the income that I wanted I was used to having you know my son in school um, and I had started taking classes so my full I had a full day of work my entire skip my schedule was just full I didn't have much flexibility everything every hour had something for me to do so I had work I had um, my son in school and I was uh, taking classes as well but when God shifted me into a new season he called me away from the job I started homeschooling my son and I was taking classes so there's still a gap of time and I didn't know what to do I I thought I had did something wrong because I had too much time on my hands right because I was so used to having a full day of work, a full day of me doing something, me being committed to doing something, that now I'm in this new season and I didn't know what to do with that extra time. So I, I just thought that I was doing something wrong. And it was uncomfortable to me. You know, you hear that scripture where God is saying, be still and know that I am God. I wasn't comfortable being still. <laughs> I wasn't comfortable being still. I wasn't, that was foreign to me. That was so foreign to me. That was so far from, from what I believed in. So to have this extra time on my hands, I didn't know what to do with myself. So I would talk to God, you know, as usual. I would talk to him and I didn't hear him. I wasn't hearing from God. He went, he was just silent. I knew, I felt his presence, but he was just silent. And so I just, I, I wasn't, I was wrestling with that. I was tossing and turning. I wasn't sleeping. Like I wasn't resting. I'll put it like that. I wasn't resting. So I was tossing and turning throughout the night. I would wake up, you know, in tears because I was worried. I was concerned of what was next. And I just remember one specific night and I said, I can't do this anymore. And I just dedicated that entire evening and night to just spending time with God. I had my Bible with me. I got in bed and I had my Bible with me. And I'll never forget, I told God, I said, I'm not going to sleep until you give me a word because I'm tired of going to bed I can't really sleep, I can't rest. I'm waking up restless and I'm still having to homeschool. I'm still having to show up for class. 
I was tired, I was drained. So that night, when I prayed that to God, I just kept reading. And it, I think it took me an actual hour. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. I don't know if I had to get out of my own way, but that night, it took me some time, but I finally got to a place where I was just reading. I don't remember going to any specific scriptures. I just remember picking back up from where I was reading from in the morning time during morning devotion. And uh, God met me because as I'm reading, I just remember feeling his presence like so strong. It was just hovering over me and I was at peace. I felt this peace and that peace actually put me to sleep. So that morning I woke up at peace. I was able to rest through the entire night. That was my first night being able to rest through the entire night and I felt so good. I felt rejuvenated when I got up. I read my Bible in the morning and that day I just remember just feeling full. I remember feeling at peace. Things I want you to notice, my current circumstances, it didn't, you know, it wasn't fixed or anything. Nothing new took place. Nothing was fixed, but I had that peace. So I wanna to come to you today with Isaiah 26, three. It says, I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Keeping your eyes stayed on Jesus, keeping your mind stayed on Jesus. And that was what was taking place, reading my Bible, like saying in the word in the morning, saying in my word at night. And I started realizing that when I was waking up with Jesus and going to bed with Jesus, throughout the day, I was carrying Jesus. And so even when those distractions came, because distractions will come, and when those distractions came, I was able to, you know, keep my eyes on Jesus. I was able to, you know, repeat his word back to him, which helped me out. It, get, it helped that peace to stay there. So I'm looking at my notes, so y'all just bear with me. I want to make sure I'm covering everything um, on here. But you have to know the God that you serve. You have to know that he's your provider. You have to know that he's your, your sustainer. You have to know that God is for you and not against you. And everything that you need in this season, he's going to make sure that he provides it for you. God knows what you need before you realize what you need. So you have to realize that God doesn't have any F's on his report card. So you have to realize that God is for you and that whatever you need, whatever he knows that you need, he's going to provide, provide it for you in this season. He's not going to let you go without. You may not have everything that you want, but best believe he's gonna make sure that you have what you need. The second thing I wanna to talk to you about is learn how to surrender. You were never meant to carry all of this by yourself. You were never meant to do life alone. So you have to know, there's a scripture, it says, it says, cast your care upon me, for God cares for you. He says in another chapter or in another book, I think it's in Matthew, where he talks about his burden is his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He wants you to cast all your cares on him. He wants you to bring all your burdens to him so that he can carry it. Whatever task, whatever responsibility that God has given you in this season, all right? He's not just giving it to you. He's not just giving you the privilege and the honor to be over that thing. But he wants to walk it with you. He wants to walk through this season with you. Your children, he wants to parent them with you. You're not doing this by yourself. You don't have to do this by yourself. He wants to partner with you. 
but you have to let him in. You have to surrender. Last night I was on, um, I was coming from class and I was talking to God and I was just like, I was sharing with him of how I feel vulnerable in this season. I'm grateful for where he has me, but I feel vulnerable. I feel like my heart is out there. And I just came to him as is. That's how he wants you to come to him as little children. He wants you to come to him with all your cares, all your concerns, all your worries. The strength that is required for you in this season, the, the strength that's required of you, you can't do it by yourself. So you're gonna have to depend on him. You're gonna have to seek after him. You're gonna have to partner with him because the strength that you need is gonna only come from him. The other thing I wanna talk to you about is you're gonna have to seek after the peacemaker. He's your peacemaker. So in order to get that peace that you're looking for, the peace that surpasses all understanding, that peace can only come from, that perfect peace can only come from the peacemaker, Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about the peace that you get from rolling up the blunt. The peace is not in that blunt. I'm not talking about the peace that you get from reaching that climax. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about that type of peace when you, you know, when you want to hook up with somebody and reach that climax and be like, girl, I'm good now. I'm not talking about that type of peace. I'm talking about the type of peace that's in you and on you and through you, even in the difficult seasons. I'm talking about the peace of God, that perfect peace that he will just hover over you, that no matter what's going on around you, you're still, you're unshakable. That's what he wants from you. That's what he wants for you. So you have to seek after God. You have to seek after his word. That's the peace that I'm talking about. That's the peace that I want you to experience in this season. And in every season, whether you're in a high season or in a low season, that's the peace that I want for you. That's the peace that God wants to give you. There's a story um, with Peter and I'm pretty sure you're familiar with it, but Peter, you know, Jesus is, um, he's just coming back from an event, you know, he's speaking and everything, performing miracles, and he's telling the disciples, he said, hey, go, go get on the boat, because now he's getting ready to travel, right, to the next, the next town, but Jesus tells the disciples, he says, go in the boat. Well, Jesus, he gets on the mountaintop. He goes up to the mountaintop. He prays, and as he's coming back down, he's headed towards the boat where the disciples were, but he's walking on water. So at first, the disciples, they look at him, and they think he's a ghost. They get scared, right? <laughs> they get scared, and he's like, it's a ghost. And Jesus is like, take courage. It's me. Don't be afraid, all right? And so Peter says, Lord, if it's you, Tell me to come walk on water. And Jesus says, come. Well, Peter gets out the boat and he starts walking on water towards Jesus. He didn't just get out the boat and start walking on water. He had to walk towards Jesus, all right? But then there are some winds that's all around him, our current circumstances, right? And Peter gets distracted by the winds that's around him. So he starts to look to the right. He starts to look to the left. He's taking his eyes off of Jesus. And what happens to Peter? He starts to sink. And he's crying out. He's like, Lord, save me. And Jesus reached down and he saves him. He pulls him up and he says, oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? So I'm asking you. Why are you doubting when you know the God that you serve is a perfect God? You know the God that you serve has promises for you, has promises for your life, has promises for your children and for their life, for your family. God says he will never leave you nor forsake you. So the God that we serve 
in order to have the peace that you've been looking for, you have to sit up there and you have to get into his word. You have to seek after him and keep your eyes stayed on him. Continue to seek God and continue to trust him in this season. And I promise you, he got your back, girl. He's got you. God is so strategic that even in this season, it is preparing you, it's him preparing you for what's next. So don't be afraid of the season that you're in. Be at peace and know that God is for you and he's not against you. That's all I have for y'all today. That's all I have for you today. Um, go ahead and feel free to share this video with someone that you know that may need it. But that's all I have for you today is keep your eyes stayed on Jesus. And I'll see y'all in the next video.